in a period lost in the unrecorded shadow of time long before the christian era indian merchants warriors philosophers and religious preachers began their voyage to far off lands across the ocean they have left their indelible impact on the culture faith and world view of the people of these lands we take you on a voyage of rediscovery to witness these indian imprints on the sands of time This river flows from the Tibetan Himalayas through territories in China, Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia and Vietnam before reaching the South China Sea. This majestic beauty is the lifeline of these lands. Historians say that early Indian migrants to Southeast Asia several centuries before Christ considered this river a manifestation of their holy ganges and hence named it ma ganga which over the centuries became mekong in local accent more of this perennial river flows through laos than through any other southeast asian country we are on the banks of mekong here at champasak this is laos known in antiquity as the land of a million elephants In the previous episode of Indian Imprints we were visiting areas of the ancient kingdom of Champa in central Vietnam Now we are in Champa Sak a province in Laos which was possibly a part of that ancient kingdom many centuries ago It's called Champa Sak Champa Sak province and oral traditions refer to the ancient Cham people. It was populated with Cham people. It was part of the Cham kingdom. Visible from the Mekong River at Champasak is a mountain called Linga Parvata, a name by which it is known for over 2,000 years. This has remained a sacred place of worship for several centuries without a break, initially because of a shiva lingam on top there is a archaeological evidence particularly in a stone inscription that was written sometime in the middle of the 5th century AD the inscription mentions the name of the king Tevanika. And he said that he built the Kurukshetra. 
and it was on the foothill of the Linka Parvata, a mountain that was sacred because a Linga was erected on the top of that mountain. Based on these Sanskrit inscriptions and the fragments of sculpture and artifacts excavated, archaeologists have constructed a scale model of a local Hindu temple of that period. The discovery of Indo-Pacific beads of Indian origin, even in prehistoric settlements in Laos, points to the fact that Indian traders had contact with the area from time immemorial. Apparently, the Western concept of a mariner or merchant being wholly motivated by materialistic pursuits was not applicable to the ancient Indian merchants. These merchants carried with them their worldview, concepts of the cosmos, their religions, gods and their symbols. As a testimony to these values of the Indian maritime traders, there is many an ancient lingam at the site museum in Wat Champasak. Indeed, these lingams and other icons were chiseled locally, but the concepts were all inspired by India. A 7th century statue of Goddess Uma, an even older but very well preserved Nandi from another excavation. A Garuda with a human face and a broken Vishnu on the shoulders of another Garuda are among the remarkable pieces at the site museum in Wat Poo Champasak. When did the Hinduism was first observed, was first adopted as religion in that area? This we don't know. We don't have direct evidence. We have oral traditions, we have several legends which say that we have had contact with Indian culture from time immemorial. The most celebrated ancient monument of Laos is Vatpu Champasak, which is adjacent to Linga Parvata. In the same site which had wooden and brick temples of earlier centuries, this Shiva temple was built in the 11th century by the Kumars. Declared now as a World Heritage Monument by UNESCO, Vatpu is in three levels. There are two religious pavilions at the foothills. Intricate stone carvings of Hindu motifs adorn these structures. For instance, Shiva and Parvati riding the Nandi invite your immediate attention. As early as the 6th century, this was called Sreshtapura and was the capital of King Mahendra Varman. There is a shrine for Nandi before you walk towards the hill on a pathway with sandstone lotus buds on either side. From the ground level buildings of this temple complex to the main sanctum here is about one and a half kilometers and a climb 
of about 100 meters. Vatpu was a sacred place of pilgrimage for the Hindus from time immemorial to about the 14th century. The ornamental stone walls built between the 9th and 11th century are attached to much older brick constructions in some parts of the temple. In one of the entrances, you have Hanuman fighting a Rakshasa decorating the top, while an Apsaras and a Dwarapalaka are standing on either side. Krishna is killing the ferocious serpent Kalingan in a pediment, while Indra is riding his three-headed elephant Airavata at a lower lintel. Elsewhere, there is Vishnu flying, mounted on his Garuda. There is a demon being ripped apart by a deity, identified by some as Kali. Others believe it may be Bhima killing Jarasandha. There is an unparalleled and ingenious architectural feature at Vatpu. Streams and small waterfalls are gathered and diverted through elaborate level adjustments, holes in the walls and small canals in such a way that the lingam in the main sanctum sanctorum was always receiving a perennial abhishekam. Bas relief Shiva with five heads, with Brahma and Vishnu on either side, also received this perennial flow, imparting holiness on the water for pilgrims to collect. The Shiva temple at Vatpu was converted into a Buddhist temple in the 15th century. From then on to this day, it continues to be a sacred pilgrim center for the Buddhists. In February every year, there is a Wat Pu festival which attracts several thousand pilgrims from all over Laos and the neighboring countries. A 12-foot Buddha is placed at the main sanctum, covering the entrance to the older sanctum behind it for a Shivalingam. A Trimurti's bas relief at the entrance to the inner sanctum has been plundered in recent decades.
at the treasure house of the Watpu Champasak Site Museum, you find the three feet by three feet yoni pedestal of the original lingam from the sanctum. There are very well preserved bas reliefs like this Vishnu and Garuda. With the excavations continuously being done at this archaeological site, not every statue has been precisely identified yet. According to local experts, this may be Uma or a Buddhist goddess. Like everywhere else in Southeast Asia, there are syncretic products of the gods and mythical figures of Hinduism and Buddhism here. Here is a Bodhisattva with a conch, chakra and a trijul in hand with Buddha on his forehead. This is Brahma watching the birth of Gautama the Buddha. There is a very unusually visualized Hanuman carrying the Sanjeevani mountain by encircling the hill with his tail coiled around it. There are also a few dance sculptures unrelated to mythology. There is a small bronze collection which includes this Shiva and Parvati as well as a Vishnu riding on his Garuda. The city nearest to Vatpu Champasak is Pakse on the banks of the Mekong River in southern Laos. The most sacred Buddhist temple in Pakse is Wat Luang Pagoda. There are a number of wooden sculptures on the doors of this pagoda representing characters and scenes from the Ramayana. relief, which was part of the Wat Luang Pagoda, has now been shifted to the Pakse Museum. This Buddhist temple apparently had these images in worship till recent times. The revealing bas relief has Shiva and Parvati on the Nandi, Brahma on the Hansa, and Vishnu mounted on a Garuda. During some time, uh, Hinduism was prominent and then later on both Hinduism and Buddhism were practiced at the same time. There was certainly a coexistence, peaceful existence. We have this uh, very important stone inscription but of course there are other runes, other stone monuments that indicate construction of many temples dedicated to Hinduism. Sculptures of the Hindu pantheon and mythology have been recovered from several other sites across Laos, representing different centuries. Here is a Vishnu from northern Laos and Shiva from Southern Laos.
This lingam from Wat Phu Champa Sek, now housed at the Vien Chien Museum, is called a Trimurti lingam. The square base represents Brahma, octagonal middle represents Vishnu, and the cylindrical top, Shiva. There are a few magnificent bronzes like this Shiva Panchaka or five faced Shiva in the museum. The bronzes here take us to an extraordinary Indian connection to the performing arts of Laos. We will explore this connection in the next episode of Indian Imprints.